Welcome everyone. Today we have a special character spotlight and also character guide for Kojo Sarah, the new 4-star Electro character who uses a bow. In this video, we'll go through some of the latest official information of Sarah and also from the livestream. We'll be summarizing all of the information on Sarah's skills with her elemental skills, with her burst spells, and also with her special effects which provide us a attack boost for both of those skills. We'll be going through Sarah's potential to be a great support like Burnett, who is currently one of the best supporting characters in the game. We'll talk about Sarah's abilities and also combo style, and how she can provide us with more attack bonus. We'll be looking at Sarah's potential weapons, including some of the 5-star weapons and also some of the best 4-star weapons in the game, like the Sacrificial Bow, the Black Cliff War Bow, and also the Alley Hunter. We'll also have a look at Sarah's potential party combinations with different synergies, of resonance and also special characters, like with Chumyeon and also the animal characters for the 20% cooldown reduction, and also different synergies for the lower cooldowns and also for more energy. We'll also have a look at some of the potential team compositions with Sarah, with the Archon party, with Inazuma party, with Raiden Shogun, and also with Burnett, and also with Chuyang. So there's a lot of combinations. We can go with bonus attack, we can go with lower cooldowns, we can have a lot of combinations with her. And finally, we'll have a look at how potential is Sarah, how strong can she be, can she match Burnett as one of the number one support in the game. Because if we come over to one of the standard tier lists, we can see that Burnett is usually ranked very high as a 4-star character, sometimes even higher than the 5-star characters, simply because he's so universal and he's so powerful. Now in this video, I'll be going through some of the descriptions of Sarah's skills and also animations and also attack patterns in the livestream from patch 2.1. I'll be going through all of the patch 2.1 livestream descriptions over here, so everything's official and we'll be using those clues and also hints to build our character. As most of us know, Shara is going to be a 4-star Electro supporting character who uses a bow, and it is very likely Shara is going to be a very amazing DPS attack supporting character that provides the team with a bonus attack. Now similar to Burnett, I had a look at Burnett. Burnett does not have the highest base stats, and similar to Sarah, I don't think her base stats would be very high because she is going to be a 4-star character. And because Sarah is very similar to Fessel, I also had a look at the potential sap stats. We might see Sarah with electro damage, with energy gain, or maybe with attack percentage. And those are some of the common stats for the supporting characters. So I am hoping for Sarah to have maybe energy gain or maybe attack percentage, and those can be more effective than electro damage. And in that sense, Sarah's base attack will majority come from the weapons, and that's why we also want to have a look at her weapon choices and also the special effects. Now we know from the livestream, Sarah actually attacks very rapidly with her normal attack as a bow user. We can also see that she can teleport backwards and also deal charge attack damage with a special debuff to the enemy, and this is for her particular elemental E spell. And over here, we have the summaries to her elemental E spell. Upon casting this spell, Sarah will instantly dash back and also gain the Claw Feather cover. While under this particular buff, if Sarah fires aim shot towards the enemy, this will trigger a special ambush effect. This will deal AoE electric damage and also give the whole team bonus attack to the allies within the area. And this is likely going to have a prolonged duration of this buff, very similar to Burnett. And similar to Burnett, it is very likely Sarah's bonus attack will be based on her base attack and this will be effective with her ascension levels up to level 90 and also her weapons base attack. And this is how Burnett is usually run because Burnett wants the highest base attack for his particular damage boost effect. Now what we want to notice is Shara has to fire aim shot and upon charging her shots and firing the aim shot, we can switch Sarah into a different character. And basically this elemental spell is a combination of Ganyu and also Burnett. The combo of Ganyu is that Ganyu also dashes backwards and similar to Burnett, we have to stand within the area of the charge shot to gain the bonus attack. And this means if we're going for characters that are melee, it's much more beneficial, because for a ranged character, we have to get close to the enemy. And for a melee character, we naturally go closer to the enemies and also deal damage while under this bonus effect. The duration of this spell should be ideally a little longer, because currently I can see that Burnett have a 12 second burst elemental spell. So Sarah might have about 10 seconds, 8 or even 6 seconds for this elemental spell. Now because this is the elemental spell, each time her cooldowns are off CD, we can cast this spell and also give the team bonus attack. And at the same time, we can also go over to Sarah's burst elemental spell. Now Sarah's burst ultimate spell have multiple instances of electric damage. Initially, it will be a lightning strike and then afterwards there will be multiple chance of electric damage. And it's a very interesting part about this as well. So during the livestream, it is said this spell also increases attack of the whole party. And this is quite interesting. 
because she is one of the first characters in the game that have two instances of buff for the whole party, and both of those buffs are for the attack bonus. So we can see on the skill description, Sarah will be calling on thunders with multiple strikes. So the first instance of damage will be AoE electric damage. Afterwards, there will be four instances of multiple hits with the thunder strikes. There may be a potential to hit enemy multiple times if they're running away from the lightning, but most of the time we can hit them at least twice. Now the biggest highlight with Sarah's spells is of course the attack bonus. So in the live stream, it is described that this spell also provides attack bonus, but currently we're not sure if this is stackable or not. So if this bonus attack from the burst spell is also stackable from the elemental spell, this means that we can be potentially giving more attack bonus over Burnett. But if this particular effect is not stackable, Sarah is still a very powerful supporting character, because she can consistently give us the bonus attack with elemental spell and also with the burst spell. Now because Shara is very similar to Burnett, we do want to compare them a little further. So while looking at the burst ultimate spell, we can see that Shara will definitely deal more damage than Burnett, and this is also because she will be boosting her own electric damage and also be benefiting from the Radiant Shotgun buff, with dealing more damage with her burst spells. And this means that her burst lightning spell, which can strike multiple times, can definitely deal a lot of damage, maybe 10,000, maybe 20,000 damage. And this for a supporting character can be very good. And this is when we can go into a some form of a DPS supporting build for Shara, because she does not heal. Unlike Burnett, Shara does not heal, so we can build her into more damage over the Burnett HP base. For Burnett, we want to build him with high HP to heal. With Shara, we can build her with more attack and also more critical chance for the potential to deal more damage with the Burst Ultimate. Now currently, we do not have the exact information on Sarah's battle passives and also constellations. But knowing that she's going to be a very powerful supporting character, and also she is kind of tailor-made for Radiant Shogun on, on the banner, we know there's a small chance we can get Sarah maybe to Constellation 3 or 4, or maybe up to Constellation 6. Because a lot of us will be wishing for Radiant Shogun on the banner, so there's a high chance of us getting a high Constellation of Sarah, and this can potentially boost a lot of her supporting potentials, and this can be very good. So I'm quite excited to see what her constellations when the game comes out, when the new patch comes out, and to test her out. So I want to test Radiant Shogun, I want to test Sarah, and to see how they work together. So if in the test rounds we can test both characters at once, that'll be really good too. So upon discovering the banner, we'll go through the potential with Sarah with Constellation 6 as well. And while looking at it, I was thinking about Shara going with Burnett. We know both characters will provide attack bonus, and imagine having a character that receives both of those attack bonus. It is as if turning a 4 star character into a 5 star character, a 5.5 star. Or we can turn into you know a 5 star character into a 6 star character, just with those supporting characters with a massive attack boost. And this could be quite interesting, right? So I'm calling those two the supporting couples. And on the second part of this video, which we'll go through, we'll have a look at Sarah's abilities, combos, and also potential weapons, and how we can build her with different compositions. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Now that we had a look at Sarah's abilities and also her potential effects, Let's have a look at some of her combat style. We can start Sarah with casting the elemental spell first, dashing back and also firing a charge shot. This should be aimed at the ground to provide us the, with the most courage and also swap into a different character to gain attack bonus. Now because this spell is not limited by the energy gain like Burnett Burst Ultimate, what we can do is we can have a much more stable rotation. We know the cooldown of the spell, and once we have the cooldown ready and also the buff duration ready, we can time it with a Burst Ultimate from a different character. We can also tame, time this with a massive damage. So this is a much more stable way to provide us with a consistent bonus damage. And this is why Sarah is a very good support. Because she's more consistent, she doesn't have to rely on the burst spell. But upon having multiple enemies, we can also use Sarah with her burst ultimate spell. This will create a multiple instances of damage and debuffing enemies with electric damage. We do know that a lot of electric characters might be running the artifact with a Sunder Thermisa set. This set will allow other characters to deal 35% more damage to the enemies debuffed by electric. And because Sarah will deal multiple instances of damage, this can debuff them first and also provide us with bonus damage. The Sarah have multiple ways to provide us with buffs and also debuffs, and this is what makes her great DPS support. Now knowing that Sarah's burst ultimate spell also provides us with attack bonus damage, we can rotate this spell while the elemental E spell is on cooldown, and this can be very effective to provide us with a constant buff of attack bonus. 
And we can also try to use Sarah to support Radiant Shogun, to consistently debuff enemies with electric damage. And Sarah will also be gaining more mana from Radiant Shotgun's passives, so in return they work very well together. Having two electric characters to gain the elemental particles, having Radiant Shotgun to give her mana, and also having Sarah to come back with the elemental burst spell to give Radiant Shotgun more damage. So this can be very powerful, and I do think that's one of the reasons they had Sarah with Radiant Shotgun on the first banner. Now coming over to some of the theory crafting for the weapons, builds, and also team composition for Sarah. We know that she as a 4 star character, very similar to Burnett, they might not have the highest base attack. And that's why we want to find a bow that has the highest base attack for Sarah. And we do realize that Sarah is less dependent on her burst ultimate spell, because once she has a high base attack weapon, she can cast her elemental spells very often and still do damage and also provide a buff this way. Now most of the 5 star weapons do have a very high base attack. And knowing this, if we do have any of the spare 5 star weapons, this can be very good. And those weapons does not have to be refined, because the base attack does not go up even if it's at refinement level 1. So any of the 5 star weapons like the Amps Bow, like the Skywalk Hub, those can be very powerful. But what if we don't have the 5 stars? There are definitely a lot of the amazing 4 stars to have a look at. And over here, I've listed 3 of the best 4 star weapons for Shara with a very high base attack. I've also ranked them by myself. So for me personally, all three of those weapons are very good with a base attack of 565, which is very close to 600 compared to some of the 5 star weapons. And the number one weapon for Sarah for me is definitely going to be the Sacrificial Bow. Because not only does this bow provide a high energy gain for Sarah, it also provides her with a chance of resetting her elemental E spell. And at the level 1 refinement, it is 40%, with the max refinement, it is 80% to reset, with a lower cooldown as well. So this bow is ideally one of the best bow for Sarah, because she can cast her elemental burst spell and potentially resetting that with a percentage and then deal more damage and also casting multiple shots with the attack bonus. I'm sure you guys know how powerful this bow can be, especially on characters like Diana and characters that can reset the elemental E spell and can make a great use of this. So for Sarah to deal multiple instances of damage and also provide multiple rotations of the attack bonus for her elemental E spell, this bow is actually really good. And the best part about this bow is, even if we have this bow at the level 1 refinement, having those great main stats and also sap stats is very good. And once we get this bow to a higher level, the higher recent chest can be very good on Sarah, can be very good on Diana, a lot of the bow characters can make use of this weapon. Now the second bow to have a look at is going to be one of the Paimon Shop bows. This is the Black Cliff War bow. Now ideally, this bow is not going to be the best bow for a supporting character, this is more of a DPS bow. We can see this bow have a very high base attack and also some really good sap stats with 36.8% critical damage bonus. This is one of the bows I was thinking to use with Shara if we want to build her into a DPS supporting character, because the bow also provided us with attack bonus. So if Shara happened to defeat more enemies, she can get 36 up to 72% attack bonus by defeating 3 enemies. This bow can also be purchased and also refined it to the maximum level, because we can keep buying from the Paimon shop. And this can be one of the best alternative bow for Shara if we're considering to build her as a DPS character while supporting the team. And this bow has everything we wanted, you know, the base attack, the critical damage, and also the potential to deal more damage with high attack bonus. Now finally, the third bow of my choice for Sarah with a 4 star is going to be the Alley Hunter. This bow, unlike the other bows, it is much harder to obtain. I do believe this is one of the more rare bows in the game that only appear a few times in the banners, so some of us might have it, some of us might not have it. The bow has some really decent stats, very high base attack, and also 27.6% attack bonus for the sap stats. The special effect of this bow is very good for a supporting DPS character, because while Sarah is off the field, she will gain 20 to 40% bonus damage when she comes onto the field. And because she just have to be on the field for a few seconds, she can deal those bonus damage, then be swapped off the field. The difficult part is definitely how to get this bow, because this bow I don't think it's in the standard banner. It is in the special banners that might be rotated in the future. So in that sense, the easiest way to get a bow for Sarah might be purchasing from the Paimon shop. Or if we do have a sacrificial bow, I do recommend trying this one with Shara or trying this one with Diana, because those characters really make use of the elemental e spell. And resetting those spells means we have more flexibility and also more variety to play with the characters. Now coming over to some of the party combinations and also the team synergies for Shara. We know that she's going to be an electric character, and we've spoke about having Rina Shogun and also Sarah on the same team. 
having two electric characters gives us more electric particles, and also this allows us to cast more burst spells. I do consider having the lower cooldown reduction for Sarah as well. So having two animal characters will give us the 5% lower cooldown reduction. And if we do have Chuan on the team with Constitution 2, we can get another 50% cooldown reduction. So this is definitely potential doable with a 20% cooldown reduction. And we know that with more energy gain from the first synergy and also lower cooldown with the second synergy, she can be benefiting from both of her elemental spells and also Q spells. We can of course go with the standard, you know, two pile, two cryo for the attack bonus or the critical rate bonus. Now, because Shara is going to be an amazing DPS supporting character for electric characters like Radiant Shogun and also Kachin, we can still consider the triple F Kong King I was thinking about. So we can go with Venti, Zoni, and also Radiant Shogun. And finally, we can go with Shara. This can allow us to maximize the damage from Radiant Shogun with the supporting ability from Shara and also from the other two icons. So basically, we'll have three or four supporting characters for one particular character. And this could be a very interesting party. We can also try the Inazuma party without Radiant Shogun. So we can go with Ayaka, Yumiya, Sharu, and also Shara. And in that sense, I do think if we can fit Radiant, we still want to fit her into it. We might take away Yumiya, we might take away Ayaka, still try to fit Radiant into it. We might take out Sharu if we don't need the healing. So this can be very potential as well. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to fit Shara with Radiant Shogun everywhere we go. And that's why I was thinking about going with Shara and also Radiant for the two electric characters. Then we can go with two Animo or two Pyro or two Cryo. This is more of a mono energy team. And the biggest focus on this is to have at least one of the shielding characters or the healing characters if we take too much damage. Now I'm really interested with Shara and also Burnett and also plus any of the DPS characters. Because Shara will provide us with more damage while Burnett will provide us with healing and also more attack bonus. Having two DPS characters means those attack boosting couples can give us a great damage boost to everyone on the team. But Nat casting his burst ultimate first will also boost Sarah's damage when she casts her burst ultimate. So it's like they buff each other and then they buff the rest of the DPS characters. The best thing we want to look at is we know that Bernat's buff will last for 12 seconds. So we want to see which buff lasts for longer. We cast the buff that lasts for longer first. If Sarah lasts for 10 seconds, we cast Sarah after Bernat. And this way, when we switch into the DPS characters, we can maximize the damage. And any of the DPS character can do. We can go with, you know, we can go with Ayaka, Yumiya, we can go with the Luke, we can go with Kali, then we can go with someone Kwayo, maybe Kaya, we can go with, you know, someone like Chuyang. So there's a lot of synergies we can have with multiple DPS characters. And Shara and Burnett will be very powerful with the attack bonus buff. Now, you guys have heard me talk about this multiple times with Chuyang. Because we know Chuyang will lower the cooldowns of characters within his circle of his elemental E spell by 15%. So having Choi on the team, we can go with Shara to help Shara have a lower cooldown reaction. And Choi also provides us with a high attack speed bonus. So anyone that is melee with a poem, with a sword, or with a claymore, like Raiden, Ayaka, or Kaya, can benefit from Choi as well. We can also go with the two electro characters or the two choir characters. So in that sense, we can kind of combine and mix the characters. And if we do have characters at a certain constellation, we can have more synergies. I also remember that Jin also have a lower cooldown talent with a constellation, but that is much harder to get Jin to higher constellations. So in that sense, if we do have the, the best lower cooldown team, we can go with Chunyang, Shara, and also two animal characters, including Jin. But then we'll probably need Shao for the DPS ride, which, which can also work. So we'll look into that, but I definitely don't have Jin to higher constellations. I only have her with constellation zero. Now there are definitely a lot more combination with Sarah. And over here I did say there's countless combinations, but what I meant is having Sarah with any of the DPS character plus a healing support or a shielding support, we can go with a second DPS. This is one of the you know the cookie cutter, the classic ways to combine characters. We want one healing support, we want one DPS gaining support, then we want at least one to two DPS characters. Having only one DPS character means that you know we might be short on the, the mono element DPS. If the enemy is resilient to electric or if the enemy is resilient to hydro, like one of the special slimes, then we can't deal damage to them. That's why I want to have two DPS and also two supporting characters on the team. Now, before we finish this video, I also want to have a look at how good is Shara in comparing with Burnett. So over here, we do have a particular side over here with Genshin GG. This is one of the character builder side I started the game with, and they do have updated the character tier list. As you can, guys can see over here, they have triple S, they have you know double S, they have multiple tiers of characters, and those characters are ranked in the potential choice of the 
of the person who made the website. I won't say I agree with everything, but they do have some reasons behind it. You can see the supporting characters like Bennett and also Shinchu are the only 4 star characters on the double S tier. And this is very powerful, because both Bennett and also Shinchu does multiple things. They can heal, they can deal damage, they can even buff the team. So in that sense, let's have a look at Sarah. Sarah definitely has more potential to give the team more bonus damage, but her supporting abilities is a little weaker compared to Bennett, because she does not heal. So she does really good job in giving the team attack bonus, but other than that, she can debuff enemy with electric, she can be the electric support. Compared to Bennett, I do think Sarah is a little weaker because Bennett and also Shinchu does a little more, little more variety of utility for supporting characters. So what I'm thinking is, Sarah might be on the S plus tier, and she might be just a little weaker than Bennett. But if we combine Sarah and also Bennett on one team, this can make her even stronger. Because this way, we can have two of the attack bonus, and this is definitely something I want to try. If we can give a character, you know, 500 or 600 bonus attack, which is almost close to a 5 star free weapon. So having different supporting characters and also different roles can be very good. And this is why I'm really interested in trying multiple teams with an attack bonus. And having a high attack bonus means almost every character can deal more damage with a critical rate and also critical chance. Now hopefully you guys found this kind of build guide for the characters helpful. So in the future, we'll be making more guides for the other characters, like Aoi with the free character, with the Quiet Bow character, with the 5 star, and also with Gokumi. So let me know what you guys think about those kind of guides. We can also make a more detailed guide when the character comes out, because we know their constellations, we know their playstyles, we know their artifacts, we can test them out as well. So thank you again for watching guys, and I'll be looking forward to making more videos for us with character guides and also more news content. I'm looking into more news as well with the, with the game, and once we have you know official news, once we have new Primal Gems code, we'll be making videos on that as well. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you guys next time onto YouTube. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.